hundreds of President Donald Trump's supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol in a bid to overturn his election defeat. The mob on Thursday, January 7, Manila time, forces Congress to postpone a session that would have certified Democrat Joe Biden's victory. With drawn guns and tear gas, police evacuate lawmakers and sought to clear the Capitol building of protesters who surged through the halls of Congress in shocking scenes broadcast across the globe. Four people died and 52 people have been arrested. In a GMA News interview, Philippine Ambassador to the United States Jose Manuel Bebramualde says some Filipinos traveled from different states to Washington to join the mob. Before the riots, Trump urged his supporters to come to Washington for a rally, telling a crowd of thousands, quote, We will never give up. We will never concede. Social media giants temporarily locked the accounts of Trump as they scrambled to crack down on his baseless claims about the U.S. presidential elections amid the riots. Twitter hides and requires the removal of three of Trump's tweets as a result of the unprecedented and ongoing violent situation in Washington, D.C. He is banned on Twitter for 12 hours. Facebook later tweets it would block Trump's page from posting for 24 hours due to two policy violations. Later, Instagram head Adam Mosseri tweets that Trump's Instagram would be locked for 24 hours as well. Despite the riots in the U.S. Capitol, Biden is clear to be sworn in as U.S. President on January 20. Vice President Mike Pence declares Congress confirms the Electoral College tally of states' results that show Biden the winner of the November 3 contest against Trump. Trump had tried to get Pence and other Republicans to do what they could to block the certification of the election. After Pence made clear he would not accede to Trump's wishes, the president ripped his longtime ally on Twitter. The announcement of the state of the vote by the president of the Senate shall be deemed a sufficient declaration of the person's elected president and vice president of the United States. Meantime, Democrats complete a sweep of the two U.S. Senate seats up for grabs in runoff elections in Georgia giving the party control of Congress and the White House for the first time in a decade and boosting Biden's legislative agenda. Raphael Warnock, a Baptist preacher from Martin Luther King Jr.'s former church, beats Republican incumbent Kelly Loeffler to become the first black senator in the Deep South state's history, while Democrat John Ossoff, a documentary filmmaker, will be the Senate's youngest member at 33. He beat Republican David Perdue.